The graphics in video games are always getting better and better, but sometimes it's not necessarily a piece of hardware that makes that happen. Sometimes it's a little trick that somebody comes up with and everyone implements. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on GameRank's 5 crazy new graphics tricks that could change video games. At number 5 is the real-time deepfake. Now, if you've ever seen deepfake technology, it's basically taking many different images of a person, doing different things from different angles, and using deep learning to create a synthesis of all of these in order to use to replace the face on a person in any other form of video. It's interesting, they're making the fifth Indiana Jones movie right now, and they're actually shooting some of the scenes with another actor instead of Harrison Ford because he was injured, and they're actually going to deepfake him in later. Now, here's the thing about video. It's the first word in video games. A face in a video game is a face. Like, you can replace it using deepfake technology, and that would be a very good good way to actually bring in real people into video games, whether that means real live actors so that you could have bigger stars in video games, or even just real faces that look better. It wouldn't shock me if they moved to some form of deepfake technology, because if you remember when they tried to do the whole thing with LA Noir, it was a, a little strange sometimes. Obviously deepfakes look better than that, but Snapchat looks better than that. Deepfakes actually look a lot better than Snapchat as well, but that's like the the basis for that too. Your map and a face onto somebody else's face. Imagine if you don't actually have to do any tracking. You have all the data as to where the face is supposed to be because it exists in a virtual 3D space, which you are creating as the developer of the game. All you have to do is get a bunch of pictures of a person and voila, there you go. Doing that plus getting facial capture performance from them could potentially provide much more realistic movement rather than than just mapping them onto a mesh. At number four is curiosity-driven reinforcement learning agents, which is not a commonly used piece of terminology. It's a new way of augmenting playtesting. So before we understand the autonomous playtesting agents, we have to understand playtesting a little bit. Playtesting is the process that game designers use for attempting to find and ultimately fix bugs in the game. Typically, a full team of people is hired to playtest games, and they do very boring, tedious things that the games to attempt to break them. You know, find areas of the map that you might be able to accidentally go through, badly designed areas that allow you to do something you're not supposed to do, like leave the play area, etc, etc. It's very tedious, especially considering the fact that game worlds keep getting bigger and more detailed. Over the last stretch of time, people have attempted to fix this by using artificial intelligence, which is usually rudimentary. They set the player character off in various directions, and artificial intelligence makes basic decisions about what it's going to do in response to the map geometry, and it could augment what a human team could do. However, there is now a new form of this autonomous agent, which long story short, is much, much better at navigating the geometry and simulates curiosity, creating quote unquote more novel exploration techniques, and can actually learn complex navigation techniques. Obviously, these types of things have only been made possible as a result of gradual increases in deep learning technology. And there's obviously a lot of technical work that goes into this. There's a research paper on it titled Improving Playtesting Coverage via Curiosity-Driven Reinforcement Learning Agents that you can read more of if you're of that kind of mind. The practical result is these huge environments with various vulnerabilities that a human team can miss can be explored via a type of artificial intelligence that can't necessarily do everything everything that a person can do, but can certainly cover a lot more ground and deal with a lot more of the tedious stuff that can actually slow down a development cycle significantly as glitches, bugs, and vulnerabilities are found and fixed. And number three is machine learning, which that might sound like a very obvious one after the previous point, but actually we're talking about the effect that machine learning can have on both artificial intelligence and on various graphical processes that affect resolution. Now first, the, probably the most obvious one as well, is if you add machine learning in as an artificial intelligence thing, you could, in theory, have much more intelligent NPCs in a video game. 
that is of course great. That would make a game seem more realistic, maybe be more fun, or perhaps make Grand Theft Auto totally unplayable because you don't want to kill anybody because they all think and feel. I don't know. I don't know if it's ever going to get like that. I hope not. Probably more important than that though, on account, let's be real, I don't need NPCs to be super smart for a game to be fun. However, I do like it when a game looks really nice and runs really smooth. NVIDIA's DLSS super sampling techniques, which are machine learning super sampling that on a per game basis can be used to upscale the image in a game, so technically you're producing low resolution images, that it upscales to a much higher resolution and it looks really good, is something that can only happen due to machine learning. Now, there is an algorithmic alternative that has been created by AMD, which doesn't need to have games run through machine learning, and it does seem like Microsoft is pretty intent on implementing it with the Xbox, but they've also done a lot in terms of their DirectML, which is part of the DirectX suite. DirectML is direct machine learning, and apparently helps run really demanding games like Flight Simulator on lower-end APUs, so in theory, the Xbox could do more without being upgraded thanks to machine learning. Sony has been doing the same thing, although they've apparently done a lot of focus on reinforcement learning, which is similar to the previous thing, except for not applicable to playtesting, but actually inside the game. And number two is Nanite, which is this incredible technology that has totally changed what is possible in the Unreal Engine. Nanite is basically a way that you can import extremely high resolution meshes. For instance, these things called mega scans from a company called Quixel that goes out and scans real life objects at an intense level of detail. And Unreal 5 uses a new virtualized geometry system, as well as rendering technology that renders at a pixel level, which then makes the engine do work on, according to Epic, what can be perceived and no more. So to simplify to probably the most extent that is possible, there are two stages that Nanite works on a mesh. When the person programming an Unreal imports the mesh, either, like I said, working from a mega scan or something that an artist created, there's analysis done to break down the mesh into clusters of triangle groups. Then during rendering, those clusters are swapped on the fly at varying levels of detail based on the camera view according to the Unreal Engine documentation. Now, basically, the reason that this is so good is that the data to do this is streamed so that only visible detail has to reside in memory, which frees up a lot of system resources. It also runs on its own rendering pass and just bypasses all traditional draw calls, which is essentially a call to the graphics API to draw an object. The more draw calls you have, the more operations have to be completed. Now, because of the way it works, Nanite basically recommends using a solid state drive, which is why everybody's moving towards that. But how good this technology is and the results that it produces, that's just hard to argue with. The developers behind Gears of War, the coalition, have actually done a little bit of quote unquote kicking of the tires in terms of the new Unreal Engine and are pretty impressed with it, saying that an entire Xbox 360 character's worth of triangles fits in the eyelashes of an Unreal Unreal 5 character. They posted a tech demo with a ton of rocks, which is basically, you know, all Nanite tech demos at this point. I assume because rocks do a very good job of showing off exactly how impressive it is, but it's another really impressive piece of footage. And at number one, the Azure Cloud underlining how the Microsoft Flight Simulator, the new version, has been created. So a large amount of this game is dependent on the cloud. What's different about Flight Simulator is that it actually doesn't depend as much on the computer that's running the game because a lot of the things such as storage, artificial intelligence, various computational functions are offloaded to the cloud. Developers who ape the flight simulator development method could in theory create a large number of new features that just aren't possible without the cloud. Like you could have really, really intensive artificial intelligence directing like wildlife at all times. You could handle physics and weather at much much more complicated capacities that are just streamed to your computer rather than you having to have an extremely good computer in order to run that stuff. I mean, in theory, a lot of that stuff is probably not going to be something a consumer computer can actually calculate at the level they would want it to. So running it elsewhere on a much better computer in the cloud opens up a lot of doors. 
And that's it for today. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconHero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.